Hey guys, so I'm finally back. I've moved into my new place here out in the woods. I got internet again, so I'm here to give you what I have promised, that my review of The Amazing Spider-Man. And yes, I am wearing a sweatshirt in July. So you got The Amazing Spider-Man. This could be comparisons to the first film, sure. And personally, I like the first film better because I just felt the character who played Peter Parker was more Peter Parker-ish, and it was more of an adventure fantasy thing type thing. And with this one, it's more, it's, it's a lot darker, it's a lot more serious, which is great. Here you have like just two different, you have two films that explain pretty much the same story, except in the first film it was the Green Goblin, and this one it was uh, the Lizard. But you know, there are great things about both films, but you know, and there are great films on their own, but when you go, when you think about Spider-Man, you gotta like the first one better, because Spider-Man, not really that much of a dark character if you think about it. It's more, he's more of a lively, colorful character, where in this one, you know, it's just, it's a little bit darker, a little bit more grittier, it's a, it's a lot more serious tone, which is fine, but when I think Spider-Man, I think about, you know, I think about what they did in the first film. In this film, you don't get as much action as you did in the first film, or as much comedy, but it really is a good story, and it does set, and what the, this, movie does, it sets up a lot more of the backstory than the first trilogy did. Because in the in the first trilogy, you really had no backstory to who really Peter Parker was or what his parents did. And ultimately, yeah, we all kind of knew, but it was never really gone into great detail. With this film, it just hammered the backstory into our skulls. And what you have here is Peter's parents, they go away because, well, Peter's dad, he was a great scientist working with Dr. Connors, working at uh, Oscorp, trying to figure out um, some cross-genetic um, DNA to, to help grow limbs and, 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 and other stuff of that nature. And then Peter's dad's office gets bro broken into, and so they gotta leave. And ultimately, they do die, and it, later in the film, it looks like as somebody may have actually caused that accident that killed them. And the reason is, they're not just doing this just to give Dr. Connors his arm back, which he does do in the film, which, which ultimately leads him to becoming the lizard, but ultimately there is one uh, dark man behind all this, and that is Norman Osborn. In the first film, you see Norman Osborn as a great businessman, and ultimately, you know, he wants to save his company, and he, he decides to take a risk, and it turns him into the Green Goblin. So I liked how Norman Osborn was portrayed in the first film. A great guy, a great scientist, you know, a great businessman, and a guy who's trying to be a good father and just ends up being this bad guy that because of, of the serum. And so you, in a way you feel with the bad guy. In this one, Norman Osborn, it's clear straight up, this guy is evil. Because first of all, he's dying and he needs, a, he needs something to help him survive. And that's what all this genetic research is, is pretty much aimed for, to save Norman Osborn's life. Ultimately, in this film, ultimately, I liked Spider-Man in this film, although it was a bit more serious, like I said. It was a, too much of a darker tone for me, anyway. Spider-Man is more of a light, colorful character. But, although there are moments when you see this, there was just too much seriousness to this film, I, I felt. And in this film, it takes, there's a lot more, um, takes a lot more from the comic books, where it, instead of Mary Jane Watson, you got Gwen Stacy. And that's how it's, and that's how it is. Gwen Stacy is the first love, and Mary Jane's like the second one. In the original trilogy, they, they, they flip-flop that and had Gwen Stacy only in the last film. Anyway, so this Spider-Man film, I like the drama, I like the seriousness, I like the tone of it, but ultimately, when, I think of, when you think of Spider-Man, it's probably a bit, it's a bit too much dark tone for me anyway. I'm going to give this film a 3 out of 5 stars. Ultimately, I like this movie, but you are going to compare it to the first film. And the first film, I feel, is better than this one. But do not fret on that alone, because this is a good Spider-Man film. If you like Spider-Man, Spider -Man, you're going to love it. You're going to enjoy yourself. And I cannot wait for the next Spider-Man film to be released sometime in like two or three years, whatever. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, click that like button and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you next time.